Hi, everybody. It's Ron, Rod, and Mindy coming back at you with week uh, 10 college football action. Hey, just before we get to these uh, picks, shout out to uh, the Cappers, see how their uh, previous week went and how uh, excited they are for this week's action. How are you doing, Ron? Hey, great. How y'all doing? Yep, had a great weekend uh, in college football uh, last weekend, going uh, six and two. Hope to continue that and hit, uh, hit, hit our game the other night. And, yeah, let's hope it rolls right into this weekend. How about you, Mindy? How are you doing? Yeah, same seat. I mean, I came out ahead. It was a, a close one, I, you know. I think I was like six and four on the day, so not too shabby. Whenever I can uh, beat Vegas, I'm happy. Uh, Whitney's pretty pumped about uh, this week, though, for sure. Nice. It'll be a tough week for uh, uh, against UCLA, right? We were talking about it uh, behind the scenes. It be, might be a tough Anytime week. Anytime Nebraska for... plays, it's tough. Come on, Rod. You know, not always. Come on, come on. They, they, they've, 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 they've had some games where they, it hasn't been as tough. That is true. Um, that is true. a good spot weeks. for Matt Roll this week. Well, we have to hope for some weather, and I think that might be to Nebraska's advantage, actually. Yep. Hey, you, you can do a rain dance and, and see how that goes. And stuff. Oh, it's uh, raining. Uh, right. It's raining. Hey. Fair weather teams out the there. Wind, in LA. The wind. Come on, it'll win. win then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. God. Let's get right into it. We can action. Let's do it. First, first game up Here on the board. Go. We got to. Uh, Saturday early, 12 noon Eastern. We got Virginia Tech and Syracuse. Virginia Tech traveling into Syracuse. Virginia Tech, four point favorite, total 53 and a half. What are you thinking this one, Ron? Yeah, this is a bad spot for the Hokies. Uh, uh, consecutive wins are coming off. Uh, they, they look like it's uh, 2 and 12 ATS and uh, 1 and 6 ATS when they're coming off consecutive wins as a favorite. And you got uh, McCord there. You know, I I think uh, when you have a quarterback that throws for that many yards, there's always that back door. And so I look for Syracuse to hang around in this one. What do you think about this one, Mindy? Ah, uh, goodness. Um, I think I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to take a little Virginia Tech action there. I think this one just uh, really comes down to the defense. I mean, it's going to be key. Uh, the defensive efficiency for Virginia Tech is pretty darn good. They've always kind of been that way. Uh, but we also look at uh, them covering the spread three and one on the road. Uh, um, I'll go ahead and and take the Hokies here. Tiebreaker, Rod. Yeah. And, and for me, the, the, the question mark is is McCord's hand, right? We know he, right. we know he injured it, and uh, it, it was gashed pretty good. And we've seen him throw some. Um, oof, but they were, those weren't accurate throws. Definitely not even close. Uh, well, they were uh, accurate to pit players. players. <laughs> yeah, the pit players. I, I was like, hey, what maybe I thought you injured your hand. All of a sudden you're uh seeing colors, uh the wrong color uh is what you were doing in that one. So I don't know. I think it affected the uh, way he was throwing. You give him another week and and hopefully uh that's healed enough and improved. I think that still might hinder. I think I gotta go Virginia Tech with Mindy here in this one. Um, this is one of the teams that I think on the favorite on the road reason why they are favored on the road. It's that hand. They almost look like they're baiting you into taking Syracuse here in this one. And you look what Syracuse did. They struggled against Pitt, and that's an offensive team. I think Virginia Tech can do the same, run it up. Um, give me Virginia Tech in this one uh, here on Saturday to kick off the week. On to the next one, big game. We got Duke heading into uh, Miami. Miami minus uh, 20 and a half total, 54 and a half. What do you think here in this one, Ron? The Manny Bowl, yeah, yeah, we got Manny Diaz there, and uh, he knows this team like the back of his hand pretty much. <laughs> so, uh, and you look at Duke, a six and two against the spread this year. You got it's it's really a good team, and he, here you got Miami, and I know you know they've been like skating on thin ice all through the year, you know, with California, Virginia Tech, all these close games. Somebody's gonna get them, or they are that team of destiny, and that's what I've always said. If they get through that schedule and then what they have just done is something they haven't done in a while. You know, they revenged a couple of losses from Louisville and Florida State. And I know Florida State's not the best team, but Louisville's pretty darn good this year. And when they do that, they are a mind blowing four and 21 against the spread <laughs> the next game. I'm taking the Duke Blue Devils plus the points. What do they hear in this one, Mindy? Oh, man, it is uh, just so hard for me to go against Cam Ward. I mean, I think the guy is exceptional. Uh, and, and what I've seen or what I've noticed this year is uh, sometimes it doesn't matter if you have a team like uh, the Blue Devils, where they like to slow it down, where they like to go ahead and, uh, you know, 
chug around. I think this is a game where the offense rules, right? Uh, it's just one that I feel like they're just too fast, too quick. Uh, I mean, we saw what they did to Florida State. I think it's going to be something, you know, similar uh, to that. I don't care if Duke slows it down. I just don't think it's going to be enough here. Um, I'll take Miami, uh, lay in the, the big touchdowns here, three of them. For me, this one, I'm going to go the other way. I like Duke here plus the uh, the 20 and a half uh, here in this one. You look what Duke did against SMU, and um, they kept it close. It's 28-27. SMU is a big offensive team. They they can definitely um, throw with the best of them. And um, the Hurricanes here, we've seen plenty of times where they just play down to their opponent and uh, play down to that level, and they just win by a few. Um, put themselves behind the eight ball early. So if they do that here against Duke, ooh. They'll be chasing it. So, um, uh, yeah, it can't be go. like a Cal repeat, that's for sure. No, cannot, yeah. cannot do that at all. And, uh, we've seen it a few times from the hurricane. So, give me Duke here in this one. They're definitely, uh, been a scrappy bunch. I think 20 and a half is, uh, just a touch too much in this one. On to another big game here. We're gonna get, uh, Ohio State minus three heading into, uh, Penn State here in that one. The total 46 and a half. What do you think in this one, Ron? Big game in this one. How can you not make this a, a whiteout night game? I just that's unbelievable to me. But you know what? Ohio State's a better team. I I gotta go with the Buckeyes. They're nine and one as road conference favorites. I I, I know everybody's gonna be all over Penn State. I, I feel it. I got the defense and everything is gonna favor Penn State, but not this many points. I think if it was six or seven, maybe. I would lean toward Penn State, but just this low a number, I got to go with the Buckeyes. What do you hear this one, Mindy? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. I mean, maybe you had Ohio State versus Nebraska looking forward, maybe a little bit of that kind of thing going on. But look at Will Howard, what he's done. 74% completion percentage. I mean, that's pretty outstanding, especially for a guy uh, that I feel like he's had to play a lot of his uh, tougher opponents this year on the road so far. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and go with Ohio State. I agree. They're just better uh, overall. I mean, when you do the deep dive into the numbers, I mean, this away team uh, is definitely outshining Penn State. 87 to 78 for offensive efficiency, 100 being the highest. I mean, it's one of those, like, I, I just feel like they're just the more talented team. I don't think they're scared of a, a Penn State team that, to me, sometimes looks too one-dimensional. Right. I kind of agree. I think we're getting a consensus on this one because, uh, as I said before, um, you know, Ohio State was going to lose to the Ducks and then they weren't going to lose the rest of the season. We were going to crown <laughs> the national championship. So uh, I can't go against them here. I think they win the rest of the way out. Um, that defense is uh, absolutely stout. And that offense, uh, as it always does, it just takes a few games to get going and they keep going and they just keep getting better game after game. I know this is a, a big game. you got to cover three. I think they win by seven. Late touchdown. Wow, State wins this one. Consensus. First we did one. it. Well, we got a consensus on this one. We have one. That's <laughs> we'll see how many we get this week. <laughs> on, to, on to the next one. We're heading to uh, Michigan State. Indiana's coming to town. Minus six for uh, Indiana in that one. 52 and a half is the total. What do you think in this one, Ron? Boy, Indiana just keeps on rolling, don't they? I think a lot of people had Washington last week, including myself, but – you know, the thing about John Smith, man, he just he just covers as a dog, you know, in Michigan State. You know, I see you wearing a hat. It's a good sign there, Rod. I don't hear the dog barking, but maybe we get it to dark. But uh, I'm going to I'm going to look, you know, Indiana, you know, they're the, the schedule they played has been uh, not the best. And I think they're running into, you know, Sparty on the road. You got a team that's at Indiana playing on that fake grass, and now you're going out on that real stuff. It just there's a difference, you know, and and it, it's not as fast. Uh, definitely looking toward the under in this one, but I'm going to take Michigan State plus the points. What do you think here in this one, Mindy? Well, I mean, I still see these big offensive efficiencies here with Indiana. Uh, I was uh, hoping that Michigan State would play better versus Michigan, and I didn't really see that, right? So there isn't a lot that, um, you know, is going to convince me that they can go ahead and hang here with Indiana in this one. Uh, I just feel like that's the way I'm going to go here. Uh, Jackson, I think, has been playing good enough to go ahead and get things done uh, with the Hoosiers. Uh, I'll be on. I'll be on them laying, laying what? Touchdown, approximately. 
show up your number because I've seen it. It's come. It's dipped below a, a, a touchdown in places. It's uh, it's still at seven. There's six and a half, I think. Yeah, yeah. but there's right. definitely six and a half out there um, <clears throat> for good reason. Uh, Indiana loves to run the ball, right? I think when uh, this Michigan State team at home here can uh, slow up that run and make it one-dimensional, happen to throw the ball. And I think defensively, uh, it's loud coming into Michigan State. It's not quiet. It's not going to be a quiet place for uh, Indiana to come and play. Do the Michigan State win it outright? No. But is it close? Yeah. I think it comes right down to this uh, who, who's got the ball last, and I think uh, – Michigan State can keep it close. I, I don't think they win this outright. I, I think Indiana comes in and gets the win, but um, taking the points is where I want to be. I think it's a three, four point game. You see, head to head, the last meeting last season was 24 21. That was in Indiana. So, you know, Indiana's going to come into this one with a, being a little mad, as they would say, wanting <laughs> the win to win in the uh, as a revenge spot in this one as well. But you look, there's, they've flopped back and forth. It's like, you win one, I win one. You win one, I win one. Back and <laughs> forth, right? So I, I, I lead to Indiana get it, but same kind of thing. 24-21, last second field goal. Indiana wins it. So grab Michigan State plus the points in this one. On to the next one, we got uh, the Gators heading into Georgia. Georgia, big uh, favorite in this one, minus 14 and a half. Total at uh, 52 and a half. What do you think here in this one, uh, Ron? Yeah, back to my conference here. So the SEC, here we go. Yeah, it's the largest outdoor cocktail party in Jacksonville, Florida <laughs> at the Everbank Stadium or whatever they call it now, but it's Jacksonville Stadium. Do it every year. But here's the thing, you know, everybody's going to be probably sake taking the Georgia Bulldogs. But the one thing that Florida does is they cover against two teams, and that is Tennessee and Georgia, and they always have. And uh, if you look at uh, Billy Napier, and I know he hasn't had too good of a term down there in, uh, in the swamp, but uh, uh, look at him as a dog in the conference. Uh, he's got a 14-6 and six ATS record. And I think with uh, Mertz out of the way, I think you got DJ Lagway is going to have, uh, have full reign of the offense here and look for no way they win, but that's too many points. Give me the Gators. What do you hear this one, Mindy? Well, I mean, I think I do not know the SEC as well as Ron. That is for sure. Uh, I like these Big Ten teams, right? Uh, but, you know, it's one of these. Um, I, you know, uh, didn't necessarily necessarily like Beck, right, versus, uh, you know, Texas. Came out and proved me wrong there. Uh, and this 15 touchdowns keeps staring me right in the face uh, with Carson Beck. I feel like, um, you know, he's just going to be uh, – I feel like he's just going to be uh, motivated here uh, in, in this game. I feel like this is just not a spot. When I hear these guys, um, I think they're going to go ahead and win by the, the two touchdowns um, in this one. I mean, everything's pointing to the home team. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have enough firepower there with Lagway. I'm going to take Carson Beck and the Bulldogs. And I, I got to go with uh, with Ron here in this one. Um, the Gators just that, – that look what they did last week. They They – up, they were a dog at home, and uh, when they're a dog at home, they, they racked up 48 on Kentucky. Um, coming in against Georgia and Beck, I think if this does turn into a shootout, uh, I think Florida can go uh, nose for nose and keep up with Beck. We've seen Beck struggle at times this season as well. Um, at times when I thought that he was going to take off and excel right. and, uh, and, and, and be like, okay, this is the game that he's going to come out and he's going to kick butt and, and, and really take – hold the reins he hasn't and and he's won the game but just not at the uh what what i i expected him to uh pop out and and as ron says these are always close and um we the stat and trend that i'm looking at is underdogs at uh 10 and a half to 21 off an upset win of uh 10 points or more as a home dog the previous week 39 and 13 ats give me the gators here in this one uh plus all those boatload of points uh i think it's gonna be a little bit closer i think georgia wins it more like by seven to ten uh in that range so give me the points there next one we got uh wisconsin heading into iowa iowa minus uh two and a half favorite this one total 41 and a half what do you think of this one ron wake me up when this one's over this is going to be a snooze fest <laughs> here i tell you <laughs> you know iowa kinnick is, is tough to beat so i'm definitely going to lean toward iowa and honestly you know 
they they've been looking at at the overs because you know um, Iowa's been a lot different than they were last year. But in this one, I'm going to look at the under. What's the weather going to be like there? Um, uh, in Iowa City there, many, you know? Yeah, it's probably going to be very similar to what we have, uh, yeah. which it looks like rainy. Rain and wind, probably. Yeah, yeah I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to you under in this snooze fest, probably 17 to 9, maybe. Iowa Great. Like no wind yeah. no rain in the forecast. It's just oh, partly is cloudy. Oh, no, okay. Partially yeah. cloudy, right. partially cloudy from 7 to 10, it says here, with a uh, 74% chance of humidity, 8-mile-an-hour wind. Yeah, you might miss it if you miss, turn channels Possible. too quick. You might miss it. <laughs> yeah. But it's still a little early, right? So it's a couple yeah. days. You never know. Weather-wise, I don't think it's going to be a problem. What do you think? Here, yeah, yeah, I lean Iowa. Iowa. Uh, yeah, I mean, I probably lean Iowa too. But there's this unknown, right? It's this guy named uh, Sullivan, a new quarterback for Iowa. So, uh, what exactly are we going to get? I know what we're going to get with uh, Wisconsin, right? We're going to get another team that's going to want to run the ball. That's going to want to smash it into their opponents' faces. I mean, that's who they are. Yeah, Iowa's, they've kind of gotten a little bit away from the run game. They've been trying to pass, but I'm not so sure how this is going to go. Uh, so I kind of feel like we're getting into a game with an under, Ron. I uh, totally agree. I mean, Iowa yeah. has been overperforming. They were like 4-0 to the over the season, but I don't think this is the day we're going to go under the total. Right, kind of agree. I think the first of 20 wins, 2017 at best. Um, uh, well, you look. Consensus number uh, two on the board. All right. <laughs> I, I like the under here as well. Uh, I think this is definitely uh, one of those low scoring ones. Both teams going to try to run the ball, especially Iowa with the new quarterback. I don't think they're going to just unleash him and be like, unleash the house. And all of a sudden he's going to throw right. bobs all over the place. Nah, I just don't see that. It's just going to be simple football. Uh, hand the ball off, hand the ball off. And uh, two teams that love to ground and pound. Um, it is what it 100%. is, right? Two, right. two teams in, in, in the Big Ten that love to uh, ground and pound. So give us the That's under uh, yeah. 41 in this one. We yeah. haven't seen yeah. it a whole lot from Iowa. We had seen the higher scoring ones. I think this is uh, old school Iowa football where uh, it, maybe we need it's, uh, first to 10 wins this one. Um, agree. Consensus number two All right. on the under here in no, this one. We can do it. <laughs> We're trying to find a three-tamer. Maybe we, we can do it here. <laughs> on, on to the next one. We got Oregon heading into Michigan. And uh, Michigan, or uh, Oregon, 14-and-a-half point favorites here in this one. Total 44-and-a-half. What do you think here in this one, uh, Ron? Yeah, so you look at Oregon, you know, and that's another team like Indiana just keeps going and keeps going, like Penn State just keeps going and keeps going. The thing about it is Michigan still has a great defense, and this is the big house. And although I would love to take Michigan, I just think Oregon's too strong. I don't know where we're going to get the offense from Michigan, and that's my biggest uh, issue. So, you know, we've seen it, Rod. You know, Oregon goes on the road and somehow covers every single time. So I got to stick with the Ducks here. What do you think here in the swim, Mindy? Um, I should be wearing green. Yeah, I I totally agree, right? I mean, Davis Warren, uh, it doesn't pass for more than like 115 yards a game. I don't know what the hell they're going to do for offense, right? Uh, Dylan Gabriel is, on the other hand, uh, 18 touchdowns, like pretty darn amazing uh, this season. I mean, what he's been able to do, complete 76% of his passes, uh, literally throws about zero interceptions uh, per game if we take a look at it like that. Um, and on the other hand, you have Warren. He averages one and a half interceptions a game. I just feel like this is going to get out of hand for this Michigan team. Uh, I like Oregon big in this one. Mm -hmm. And we went the other way. Give me Michigan yeah, in this one. I was, I, I, I was wearing it earlier, uh, I think a couple <laughs> days ago. I, I kind of drop hints like that. You'll see me wearing a hat uh, earlier sure, in the huh? week, a couple times, right? Yeah, I was on Michigan. <laughs> um, this is the big house. Come on. You, know, you get give me 14 and a half in the big house with Michigan. The defense is still good. They don't need to score a whole lot. The total tells you everything. It's uh, a, a lower total. It, it, uh, it opened to 45, um, and it's coming down. 44 and a half in uh, most places. Mm -hmm. So they're expecting a low. Uh, yeah, 41.3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's 41.3. Um, Got under. Both defenses <laughs> solid enough. 
It, you will get the under. Huh? Yeah, right. Uh, you get the under here in this one. But I think Michigan covers this one, uh, surprisingly. Just one of those spots. I, I, I think they could cover this big uh, two-touchdown number. Um, where's your home in the big house? The crowd goes absolutely nuts there. Not an easy place to uh, come in and uh, cover 14 and a half. Just that little hook. A little hook seems like some burning some people with that little hook this week, I think. Uh, I can see that by 16 by game time. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to run to get it because I'm, I'm with you. I think that does pop yeah. up a little bit. So, um, But I still like Michigan plus the points uh, in this one. <laughs> I think it's a 10-point win for the Ducks uh, all day. No consensus on that one. On to the next one, we got uh, <laughs> Kentucky and Tennessee. Tennessee, uh, 17 and a half points favorites in this one. Total 45 and oh, 45 and a half. What do they hear in this one, Ron? Back to the SEC. Love it. Yeah, Kentucky's in a buy low spot. Definitely coming off that loss to Auburn. And, uh, you know, Tennessee, wow, you know, beat Alabama again. That's That's a huge win. You know, you look at Tennessee as a favorite of more than 14 points. Josh Heupel's 3-14 and 14 ATS. And Stoops, on the other hand, as Kentucky as a road dog, uh, we're looking at an 8-1 and one ATS. I think it's a buy low spot on Kentucky. Way too many points. Give me the big blue. What do they hear this one, Minnie? Ah, I see these efficiency numbers. Again, they keep on uh... – uh, shining brightly for these uh, these teams, right? Um, it, it's it's tough because um, I feel like this is one of those uh, rivalry games that someone like me in the Big Ten uh, notices, right? Uh, you've been seeing a, what a lot, uh, what a, you know, Kentucky's been doing here as of late. Uh, but to me, it comes down to I got you know uh, twenty points better to the offense for Tennessee. I got almost uh, thirty points better for the defense for Tennessee. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go Tennessee in this one to cover the number. I, and for me in this one, I like uh, I like Tennessee, but I like Tennessee in the first half. I think they come out and uh, solid and just whoop it up early uh, in, in the first half uh, in, in this one. It's just spot. They'll be ready to go in this one. Um, place will be going absolutely nuts. And it's just a spot that I like to go uh, uh, with the team in the first half. Second half, I don't know. They might take the foot off the gas a little bit. And uh, Kentucky might be able to get into the back door. But I I like Tennessee in the first half. I think they jump out to a big lead uh, early and have a big halftime lead. So give me Tennessee in the first half in this one. On the next one, we got Texas A&M against South Carolina. Texas A&M favored minus three and a half in most spots. Total 43 and a half. What do you think of this one, Ron? Yeah, you know, which South Carolina team are they going to get? That's that's the question you got to ask yourself. The one that won in Kentucky, the one that went to Alabama and only lost. and Or are you going to get that darn South Carolina that was at home and got blown out by Ole Miss? But, again, these these points here are kind of telling you it, it, it's really a small, you know, favorite on the road for A&M after a huge upset. Uh, and I'll call it an upset because LSU, I mean, they A&M pulled an okie doke, switched quarterbacks, and LSU had no <laughs> clue, had no clue, kind of like Wisconsin and Penn State. You know, when you switch those quarterbacks, they had no clue how to defend them, and they just ran all over the place. If, if we got Reed going again for A&M, I would look for A&M to win this, but I'm going to take them on the money line on the road. When they hear this with Mindy. I think it's going to be a under, under, under. I mean, look at the defensive efficiencies here. 81 for Texas A&M, 86 for South Carolina. I think this is going to be a big defensive game here. Uh, low scorer. I like it. Give me the under. Kind of like the under as well. But I like Texas A&M to uh, get the job done again here. I went wrong. I don't know. Uh, it's at three and a half now, right? That is, there's that little hook trying to scare you. I think Texas A&M wins by touchdown. I think they run it in late, and uh, I think this is smash mouth early, and then Texas A&M just pulls away. Uh, solid running the team, uh, running the ball. Uh, I think they get it in late. Um, that's why it's moved to uh, the three and a half. I think it might move to four, um, the way things are going here. I think Texas a and solid. They're playing. Watch out. They might give teams some fits moving forward, uh, this A&M team in a playoff. Oof. Yeah, solid, solid team. Um, excited! I can't wait for this year's playoffs. By the way, this is going to be absolutely uh, 
the epic. I, I just love the idea of throwing more teams into the mix. Who doesn't as a fan watching uh, more, more, and more football? I mean, the more meaningful football <laughs> later in the season, right? Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> We just we can do the same thing for some of these bowl games going forward. All right, on to the next one. We look at uh, Pittsburgh taking on SMU. SMU minus seven and a half in places. Seven. Shop your number. What do you think here in this one, Ron? Yeah. Welcome to the ACC. SMU has really made a statement coming to the ACC this year. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I, I love what Red Slassie's doing. He used to be our offensive coordinator down at Auburn. Um, but yeah, they they're moving the ball, they're throwing the ball. They they got a two headed attack there going. You know they can run, they can uh, <laughs> they can pass. You know I love teams that have uh, you know dual threats that way on the offensive side of the ball, and their defense is playing really well. And coming off that uh, you know kind of lackluster performance against uh, Duke, um, I look for SMU to roll here. Pittsburgh, you know, just come out and you look at Pittsburgh when they go on the road as a uh, underdog in conference after back-to-back uh, straight-up wins there, 0-6 against the spread, while SMU coming and playing uh, teams that are over 600. Uh, they are 9-1 and one against the spread at home. So I'm taking SMU and laying the points. What do you hear this one, Mindy? I think this is going to be a good one. I think this is going to be close. Everything that I look at, it is literally like thin, a razor thin, right? We got um, – 2-0 record against the spread for Pittsburgh. So 2-0 on the road, 3-1 at home for SMU. Look at their offensive efficiency, 65 and 65. Defensive efficiency, 65 and 77. I mean, this is going to be a close game. And when they're close like this, I'll take the points. Uh, this is my one where I'm not going to go ahead and uh, lay the chalk this time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the points here with Pittsburgh to stay hot. I'm with you. You're going to give me seven and a half here. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh here as well. Um, Pittsburgh very good at, at, uh, at slowing up the run. Uh, I'm going to make SMU look kind of one-dimensional at times, I think, in this game. Um, making SMU having to throw the ball. I know SMU just loves to, to run, run, run the ball. And uh, Pittsburgh defense is tough. That line up front is going to slow SMU up and uh, make the QB have to use his arm. And I think that's not where he excels. I think he throws a pick or two and Pittsburgh uh, takes advantage. Look what they did last week. Uh, did Pittsburgh when they for five turnovers last week, Oof. do that against this week. And uh, Pittsburgh comes in and outright some uh, in SMU. So give me the, the seven and a half there in that one. That wraps up our uh, board of 10 for the week. We did it. Uh, we did it. Got through it. We didn't get a consensus. We have two that we like the same. So I'm going to turn that one into a little two-teamer. I'm going to take Ohio State and uh, our under uh, in, in this one, right? It was Perfect. the Ohio State one and the under in the uh, where was it? Wisconsin, in the, uh, Wisconsin, Iowa. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Iowa. As, as that was, I like them both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. A little two-teamer for everybody. Bonus. All right, on to the next part of the bonus uh, uh, here. We all have a, uh, another pick for everybody. The game that we've uh, went off these board of these 10. Let everybody know what you got uh, going on at Tony's Picks this week, Ron, as well uh, as your little bonus play for everybody. What do you got? Yeah, so I'll have uh, definitely uh, four or three or three or five pack uh, on Saturday. Been doing well in college at uh, 13 and six the last 19 games there. So uh, looking to uh, uh, expand on that. And uh, for my bonus game, we're going to go to Washington. USC playing Washington, and that's a tough place to go. And let me tell you, Lincoln Riley is not a good coach on the road. 4-18 and 18 against the spread, against teams with consecutive losses. And uh, I look for Washington to get it done outright over the Trojans of Troy. Fun. Nice, nice, nice. Let all these fine folks, what you got going on at Tony's Picks this week, Mindy, and uh, what's your bonus play for everybody? All right, all right, right, right. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I love me some college football, so I'll have some three-packs available for you. I'll get you covered on the uh, early games, on the late slate. So after you have, uh, you know, had your winnings, you can come back to Tony'sPicks.com again and get yourself even more winners there um, at the end of the night. Uh, make sure you guys always use that promo code Tony T at checkout as well. And just make sure you get over to check out our site all the time, right? There's tons of hot cappers. Make sure you get there. Check it out every single day. 
Uh, mine is pretty lame, right? So I'm going uh, Georgia Southern versus South Alabama. But sometimes you just got to find yourself some winners, right? We don't care if it's the big game of the day year um, or not. But I'm looking at the home team. I'll be taking the South Alabama Jaguars here in this one. Uh, it's minus six and a half. I think this one here is going to be an easy cover. These guys are covering at home, three and one, uh, covering by 12 points or more against the spread. Uh, also, if I look at some of these um, efficiencies, uh, they're just getting it done all around. So go ahead and give me uh, South Alabama here uh, for a free play. Nice. Like yep, I those. agree with that one. All right. Like <laughs> we're going to get consensus on all our little boats. Definitely. I, I like those <laughs> as well. Nice. Uh, and, and for me, I'm going to go to a uh, hey, game that uh, maybe didn't cover that I thought maybe she might, but uh, I will. All you right. Look at this UCL t UCLA team and that scrappy bunch going into your backyard um, is, is UCLA. You know what? They're going to come on money line first half uh, uh, in Nebraska. Fans might be a little restless, but don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. UCLA is going to be uh, at the uh, lead at the half, but they always give it away. They just give it away. Nebraska comes back and wins it. So uh, that's my play for you. Right. UCLA wins it first half. I got a 24 and 5 um, ATS play on UCLA in the first half. Grab the points. I don't think you need it. I like a money line uh, to have the lead in the first half, and they just lose it in the first half. <laughs> So I like, it, it, I, like, I, like the I like the outcome. I like the outcome. That's all they do. Like. Yeah, the outcome was yeah. great for Nebraska. Did they get the cover though? That's the. It, Does that mean that Nebraska's going to go to a bowl game, you guys? Is that what that means? I mean, are you feeling it? Our first bowl game I, in like what? Like feels like twenty five years. Yeah, exactly. Right. So the crowd will be up for it. They haven't been around in a while, and, and after being I mean, down I think half, it's gonna be, it'll, it'll, it'll be like a, 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 a ruckus will start. It'll be like, oh yeah, here we come, here we come, and then they come and and then get the win. Uh, I like them late, so. All right. <laughs> I get the win there anyways. And I like Mindy. I got the, I'll do the same. I'll have probably a three-pack in the morning, three-pack in the middle slate, and then uh, three-pack in the night slot. That's not smaller, so might be a five-pack between the middle slate and the night slate. But definitely uh, head on over to Tony'sPicks.com there and check it out. Um, Paris, uh, you know, we've been hot in uh, college football, so uh, definitely want to check us out over there. At Tony'sPicks.com, and as Mindy says, yeah, keep an eye out. You'll see some new article writers coming in. Uh, Mindy included uh, will be writing some new articles over there at Tony's Picks. So watch for big, bright things coming at uh, Tony'sPicks.com. I'd like to thank everybody who tunes into these videos because hey, without you guys, we're not being able to shoot these videos and uh, get out some winners to you. So thanks everybody that tunes into these uh, videos week after week. Thanks everybody. Give us stuff up. Greatly appreciate it. So. Uh, from all of us here, hey, we'll wave you goodbye. Have yourself a good week. Till we see you next week. Good luck. Week good luck. See you next week. Good luck. Get it. Crush the books.